Welcome back. I'm Gary Parr. And I'm Christine Williams. You're listening to the midweek version of Fiber Talk, that twice weekly podcast for folks who make fine art with needle and thread. Very nice. This week is a big week for us because it's the uh, official launch of the long awaited Sarah Brazier stitch along effort. So, yay for that. And along with us, the uh, the talent who stitched the Sarah Brazier model, Jacqueline Morris. Hi, Jacqueline. Hello. It's lovely to be here. Well, glad to have you. Now, now, before we started recording, I was getting a lesson on how to say Jacqueline. Apparently, in, <laughs> in England, it's Jacqueline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my official name, yeah. Jacqueline. But <laughs> Your us, actual name. But us Jack Americans can say Jacqueline. I love it that way, Jacqueline. Yeah. I mean, it okay. just sounds so much nicer. <laughs> okay, I'm a mess right now. So there we have it. Ah. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to uh, get the down, the, the sad stuff first. A uh, couple of uh, deaths, and, and we, we don't normally have passing of people, but these two have touched us because we have talked about them. And Christine, this from Gina Kleinmartin. This is a yeah. store you visited. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, Stitchery Row up in uh, Endicott, New yeah. York. Yeah. A daughter of Kimberly and Paul, who own the store, Alicia, has passed on on the third. And uh, yeah, sad to hear that, especially when a child goes. That's um, that's sad. So we keep, uh, you know, as, as always, if prayer is, is part of your life, uh, keep these folks in the prayers. And then uh, our good friend Arlene Cohen. Uh, works by ABC, lost her mother here a few days ago, and uh, of course, sad, uh, she's been a guest two or three times, and a good friend of ours, so sad to hear that too, and um, so a couple of, couple of downers there, it's too bad, um, and then we have Krista Gramer now, we mentioned Krista Gramer back in the States, recuperating uh, with her leg, uh, Krista Gramer of, of just stitching along, and uh, uh, probably getting bored about now, so let's uh, let's fire a few <laughs> orders for Lucy Calcutt and uh, and Gertrude's garden at Krista, just you know, to give her something to do. Yes. Um, yeah. Other than therapy, I'm sure that I'm sure there's a boatload of therapy going on with that break. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's uh, yeah let's fire a few orders at Krista, uh, just stitching along, just to give her something to do, something to package up, and mail, and and um, yeah. I think that'd be a good idea, and that that Lucy Calcutt uh, uh, sampler—that's a beaut. So, yeah, want to have that. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I just got back from a family wedding in Minneapolis. Now I've ordered a couple of times from the Stitchville USA shop up there. I got to go. And you had the pictures on Instagram, and everybody went crazy. And I got a bunch more. I'm going to make a slideshow. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to make a slideshow on wetalkfiber.com of the pictures. They're mainly pictures of thread because it's just, <laughs> that store is packed with thread. I'll tell you, I was amazed at how much thread she has in there. Like, like different, all the brands, and then the full line of all the brands. And uh, oh, just walls and walls of thread. I, um, yeah, beautiful store. Jackie, do you get? Uh, do you have a store near you? I know you guys have a little different world over there when it comes to local stores. Very different here. Yeah. Um, no, I don't have a local store. Everything's ordered online. Um, but I have seen the photos you posted on Instagram, and yep, I was pretty much wowing too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, a whole boatload of those more to come, yeah. Uh, Deb, who owns the store, uh, turns out I, I was lucky. She normally doesn't work on Saturday, but uh, she was there uh, the Saturday, uh, this past Saturday when I got, uh, got a couple hours free. And uh, so I got to meet her and talk to her about it. And this is their fifth location. And uh, 4,200 square feet, 1,300 plus models hanging in the store. You could just walk around for hours looking at the models. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. imagine that, 1,300 models. And, um, and, you know, it, and it's, it's easy. If you're in Minneapolis, it's 15 minutes. I was there. It's right off, the, right off one of the main expressways. 
you're right there in a little shopping uh, area there and um uh boy she's got it's a big store the nice thing is a big store and it's full but it doesn't feel cramped like you can move around and uh and check things out and and uh, not feel like you're going to bump into something uh, really nicely put together she oh she has so many charts she said she's the only only remaining cross stitch store in the Minneapolis area there's some uh, needlepoint stores but uh, she's the she's the remaining one from you know from the heyday of cross stitches cross stitch stores but uh, oh what a it's just beautiful just a beautiful store all kinds of knickknacks and things to buy and I <laughs> I had I had no need for any thread of any kind but yeah I did I walked out with uh, a few skeins <laughs> <laughs> yep. walked out with a Karen Kluba uh, a chart, her sunset chart. I don't need another chart, but yeah, it's one of those stores where you go in and man, you just, you got to take something. It's got to yeah. take something. So, yeah. And I got one of those, I, I've seen them, uh, a, a little square of wood. Of course, it's a promotional thing for her, has her store name on it and everything. But it's it's a square of wood that's marked off, so you can lay it in the corner of your canvas, and depending on how much margin you want, one, two, or three inches for the framer, and then oh. just lay it in the corner, and then that'll tell you where your upper left corner is. Well, that's nice. Yeah, so it, it's uh, it's just a square of wood, and um, uh, there's a hole for one inch, and a hole at two inch, and then the corner is the three inch. So uh, I'd seen those before, so I grabbed one, and um, uh, now won't have to find the center, find the top, and then find the uh, upper left. And because uh, I'm always nervous about uh, measuring in, you know, people say, "I oh, just measure in a couple inches and down a couple inches, and you'll be fine." I like to have something a little more precise than that. So I got one of those little little gadgets. Um, but oh, and she's got a a, a guy who does. Uh, scissor holders w turns out of wood scissor holders and and other little uh, um, you know holders like for laying tools and those kinds of things oh man yeah yeah she's uh that's a nice shop if you're in minneapolis uh got to go to that shop and if you need thread oh, just just give her a call she's got it i can about guarantee you that uh, uh just oh i don't know how she keeps track of it all quite frankly so it must be difficult to even manage that kind of inventory. Yeah. You know, because you, as a retailer, you want turnover of your product because you don't want things sitting there for too long because then you're not really, you know, moving inventory. And to have that many, to be able to offer that many different fibers and all of the colors, you know, that that's, it's a big job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I can't even imagine what it's like to uh to keep track of all that uh and, and and you know every time uh that you think you're all set somebody walks in and wants a color and you don't have it you know you, you just know that happens and uh yeah i don't know how she keeps track but uh it's all there it was beautiful it was beautiful yeah i had just held the phone up to take the pictures and you could just fill the frame <laughs> just fill the frame with with threads yeah yeah all the colors yep great fun great fun um Let's see what else do we have? Oh, I wanted to, wanted to talk about this, and Jackie, you'll be able to help us with this one. I uh, I got a, kind of a kick out of this. Um, Ellen Mil Milky, M I E L K E. See, Jackie, this is the thing with names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah see. see, this just proves the point. Here we go. Yeah. So Ellen M of in Needlepoint Nation. I'm new to this group and Needlepoint and have a really dumb question. Well, there's none of those. I mean, there, there are no dumb ones, especially in, in the stitching thing, because there's always somebody wanting to learn. So how do you use up all the leftover threads that were purchased for specific projects? I've only done four canvases and have all this left, and I think there was a picture. And my reaction was, what's the problem? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's a really good question, though, because you do yeah. you end up accumulating all of these half skeins, and you don't want to start a project with a half skein unless you kind of know, you know, if you are doing your own design and you know you're going to use a little bit of thread, then it's fine. But that's I think that's an excellent question because otherwise you end up accumulating all of these little bits, right? Right. Yeah. So yeah. what do you do with them? I could tell you what I do with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
It's not going to be what Gary does with them. Me neither. I'll have something completely different. Because because Gary, I'm sure, has them all sorted and and looks over them lovingly. They are all sorted. Yes, you're right. <gasps> yeah. See. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I um, when I've got enough of them, I draw something and then embroider something, like maybe a bird or a flower or something, and um, do a bit of embroidery and use my silks up that way. Hmm. So that's pretty close to what I do. I, I put them sort of in a pile for just random embroidery projects because those yeah. are things that you're deciding on the colors yourself. So you can make it whatever you want. Um, and then things that are just too little for anything and not worthy of really saving for really that you don't have enough of for anything. I end up putting outside for birds and then they take them and they use them in their nests and then you can find their nests pretty easily because they're full of crinic. <laughs> yeah now you're gonna hear from are you horrified you're horrified aren't you gary <laughs> no but you are gonna hear from a whole bunch of people because you're not supposed to do that from what i understand oh, for for birds yeah. why because uh, uh they get tangled up in it and um uh it calls attention to their nests and Oh, yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to do but it's that. little, yeah, it's little tiny pieces. I don't put long, long, long pieces, just yeah. you know, like literally tiny little shreds of pieces. Yeah. So you're going to hear from people on that one. Oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. all right. That's fair. That's fair. I can be corrected. <laughs> if I've done something wrong, I'm happy to be corrected and I won't do it again. That's fine. Yeah. No, that's a natural thing to think to do. But yeah, you're apparently that's uh, more problems than it's worth. Yeah. Yep. So there you go. Sorry. <laughs> so I have to keep them forever is what you're telling me. Yeah. Well, I like the, I like the, um, uh, like little pieces, the, the people who will keep them in a jar and then uh, get those, um, uh, see through Christmas ornaments and just fill them up with thread and make a Christmas ornament out of them. That's, you know, that can be effective. If I have little tiny snippets left, then if I'm stuffing a little pillow or something, you know, a little pin cushion, then I'll stuff them in there as well. Oh, instead of uh, fiber filler. Yeah, mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. just, you know, to put them somewhere. Yeah. Hmm. But not yeah. the silk ones. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> yeah. I like the, the, the draw a little something and make a, make a, a, an embroidery thing. That's a good idea. They, that lends itself to the Mary Corbett um, monogram really well because yes. the, she's been doing a lot of those lately and, and doing the uh, sort of negative space monograms where she'll draw a letter and then embroider all the space around them. And, and Instagram is actually pretty good for things like that also, where you'll see just, you know, areas, big areas filled with just, you know, sort of random flowers. And that's a perfect sort of application for this because you don't need a whole lot of any one thing because the whole idea is that it's just sort of a fruit salad of, of things so yeah that's a great way to use them up and and l and m it's really okay to accumulate threads you never know when you're going to need some just you know especially with a sampler you know i just need a little color here and you got a you know a couple three feet that'll usually do the job so um yeah build it up but keep them organized because you hear that from a lot of people yeah yeah i know i have it here somewhere in this pile yeah mm. some people <laughs> Some people like to um, uh, make the samplers personal to them, like change the color of the shoes. I know Nicola's done that previously in her own samplers um, or add a little something, you know, so it makes it more personal to them. So maybe they need the threads for that. All kinds of uses. It's not a bad thing. Mm -mm. No. You build them up and then pretty soon you have a little project. You discover, hey, I already have that thread. That's the, that's the best part when you when you have a build up enough stuff and you're going to start a new project and you can sit down before you even go to the store and and just check off on the list all the ones you have enough thread to do the the project and then mm -hmm. go buy go buy the two or three that you need that's um that's a nice plus yep so there you go Ellen be glad to have all that extra yes <laughs> it's a good thing all right let's talk about Sarah Brazier. Now this this uh, the 11th, so this is our our official kickoff. But uh, as we said uh, in the last couple of weeks, we know that people don't have their linen 
Uh, still waiting, uh, some people for linen, some I think for thread, but mainly linen seems to be the problem. So we're going to start this thing, but uh, um, that doesn't mean that it's a terrible thing if you don't have your stuff and can't start till next week or whatever. Some people have been stitching, well, some people got it half done, and I'm jealous. Uh, I, yeah. Mine's going really slowly. I So, yeah, maybe it's just I have no time. That's also a thing. <laughs> a factor. Jack, you have yours done? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, so I have to ask, though, how does it yeah. feel to have this many people pouring over your work so closely, like scrutinizing every stitch? They did it. Uh, it's crazy, to be honest. Um, quite surreal. Uh, I had it on with Mary Lee as well, because that was the another stitch uh, a long thing that everybody did but this one crazy i can't i mean your facebook group how many people are stitching it i pop in and out of there and have a look and you know to see some people stitching it is really quite surreal it's amazing it's lovely but you know yeah, i think we're at, i think we're at 725 now yeah wow 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 it's amazing it is it is a beautiful sampler um and it's so lovely to see everybody stitching it but yeah, I wondered that too. What does it feel like to have people just pouring over your work? Um, Mad. I mean, there's nothing. <laughs> yeah, you can you can you can feel quite proud because it's it's beautifully done all the way around. But uh, yeah, I'd be a little yeah, I'd be a little nervous. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't feel nervous. I just um, you know, I stitch. Everybody's human, you know, and uh, somebody may pick up a fault somewhere. But I try my best not to, you know, I. I do my best not to put um, things go wrong in it, and um, you know, I, if there are, if there are errors in it, I'm only human, so that's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think anybody would would be looking for those sorts of things. I think really people are looking for guidance, you know, looking for yeah. you know they're just looking at okay, how is that done? Because the chart is one thing to look at but you know especially things like the satin stitch so how how did that come to be and how did how did you do it because that's something that's difficult to do you know from a chart yeah. right so yeah. that you know that's the kind of thing that people are just going to be pouring over looking at you know to see how how you achieved it yeah so that they can you know find a way that they can achieve it to um you know in a way that's satisfactory to them Absolutely. And I, I understand that, you know, everybody stitches in their own special way. They have their own rhythm or or technique of starting in, in different places. But, you know, I follow generally everyone that I do. Um, I generally start the same way um, and then adjust it to whatever the sampler has. I mean, this sampler is very quirky, very, very quirky. And every motif I had to triple check before I stitched it. Um, uh, without you know with Nicola um, and thank goodness Nicola, Nicola has uh, uh, has a lot of patience with me um, and is very supportive <laughs> very supportive you know just a, a, a phone call away and I ring her all hours of the day and night can you just check this check this and she's amazing um, and we both you know work on it and then we adjust it change it you know to make sure it's correct from the original you know because that's the main thing that it has to be true to the original and I'm, I'm a real stickler for that as well um, so everything that I stitch I make sure that is is correct as to what Nicola has go go back to the beginning how explain how you get started with with one of these samplers does nicola say here's two or three would you like to do one or how, how does this how does this process work well i got the chance to go and visit her last year um, when i was visiting her at her home um, she showed me a, a few samplers you know that were potentially in the pipeline and do I like them or would I like to stitch them and I picked two, um, two then when I was there that they were really lovely and this was one of them I was in awe when I saw the original I, I just couldn't believe it so um, I said definitely I wanted to stitch this one um, and, and that's what happened but if I'm not in her home then she'll either send me the photos via 
um, the internet and I'll have a look at which ones I like or she says oh I really know because she gets to know what I like to stitch yeah. and what I don't like to stitch <laughs> so she knows <laughs> she knows um, so you know generally she picks really good ones for me to stitch and I really enjoy them does she do the charting and then you stitch the model or do you do the charting also How, what, what's the role there she uh, um, she charts everything and then uh, emails it to me. I check it over. Um, if I see uh, things that don't quite look right, then I'll message her or phone her. Um, we'll look at it together with the original and then she'll change it if it needs to be changed. Um, and then when the chart's okay to go, then I prepare everything to stitch. And as I'm stitching, I still may pick up things that don't quite look right and I'll check them as I go with her. Okay, so there there is truly a collaboration. It, it oh, isn't definitely. just yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 And yeah, like sorry, yeah, ahead, like no, I say, um, Nicola's on call literally twenty four seven to me. <laughs> so I can I ring her and I you know I speak to her at all hours of the day and night, um, you know, to check. Oh, can you just check this for me? Or yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. And it sounds like the chart itself is really a living document until the model is finished. Yeah. I mean, if you saw the working uh, the working chart that I have, what I use, it's got pencil marks all over it, uh, arrows, um, ticks on it, you know, to make sure that with big circles, you know, if I'm querying a bit. So it's pencil marks all over the original chart that I have. Yeah. You go over it and you agree, all right, it's ready to be stitched. So then uh, she ships you linen and silk, and now that's got to be a process there because you got to keep track of how much you use of yeah, everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, she has a thread legend, so she has a rough estimate. Um, so she sends me what she thinks would would you know stitch the the design. I stitch it up, make sure I keep track of everything that I use, and then at the end I tally up what I've used, what's left, and send her the details. So she has a, a you know, a, a full breakdown of what I've used, how much has been used for the design, how much is left, so then she can put the right amounts on each chart. And are you a conservative stitcher, or do you tend to use thread generously? No, I'm pretty much in the middle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes I've stitched things um, and then I thought, oh, no, that really doesn't look right. Checked uh, and I have to, you know, frog it all. All comes out. <laughs> and then, you know, you have to start again. So, you know, I, you know, like I said, I'm only human. Things, things, you know, do get pulled out and stitched again. So I'm pretty much in the middle, you know. So, you know, I, the thread that is used is is adequate. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's good that you allow for a certain amount of that because, you know, there's a lot of starting and stopping sometimes, you know, especially at the beginning of a piece when you're sort of getting to know it, if that makes sense, you know, because yeah. each one kind of has its own personality and its own little things that it does. I mean, I've, I've just started stitching this one and it. There's certain things about it that once once you kind of get the hang of it, you know, to expect certain things. But ahead of that. You don't, and you start going one way that you expect it to go, and then, no, it doesn't go that way at all. And, <laughs> and you tear it out, and you keep going. My word is quirky. Yes, quirky <laughs> is, a, I think, very fair. <laughs> yep, very quirky. Yeah, and that's one of the things, the luxuries you don't have with a model is if you're off by one, you can't just compensate somewhere else. You, you literally have to tear it out and get it right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I try not to do that. <laughs> I haven't, fingers crossed, I haven't as yet um, had to do that. I have a technique that I do when I start the border, and that's how I start. Um, and I've never been wrong or out yet with it. So it's amazing. Well, well share, the, share that because that's been, I think, for most people who started this, the biggest hurdle is making sure that that border is going to meet at the other corner because, mm -hmm. of, because of the double border and the satin stitch. What, what is your technique for that? Okay. Um, when I start, I usually start in the top left corner. And as I stitch, um, I just stitch, you know how you stitch an X? Well, I just stitch half, stitch half of it. So it's just one line. Um, and I count in 10. So I go stitch 10. And on the 10th one, I make it across. And then I stitch another 10, make it across on the 10th one. So I can count down, look in blocks, 
um, count down 10, 20, you know, all the way down to the bottom as, as how many I need, and then do exactly all, all around the whole border like that. Um, on the 10th one, make it an X, so that when I can look at it quickly at a glance, saying, okay, that's 220 I've got, so I just need to add two more, and then I start the next part, and then it matches perfectly, and I just go round again, crossing the ones that I haven't crossed. Okay. And that's the border. Yeah. But, but And normally you make full X's as you stitch. No, normally when I stitch, I do. But for the border, I don't. I, on, I, only on every tenth one, I yeah. do an X until I know the border meets up. And then I go around the whole lot again, putting the X in. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. It makes yes, perfect absolutely. sense. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah. how, that's how I do the borders. Yeah. Okay. So, well, my, uh, uh, my linen is on the scroll frame. I got it all edged and ironed out and everything. It's on the scroll frame, and the top left corner is marked. So uh, that's the technique I'm going to use then. I'm mm -hmm. going to uh, – now, did you – when you did it, did you just do one, the very outer row of X's all the way around that, that yes. and, and, then, and then came back? Yes. So the um... – start in the left corner come down and as i come down stitch nine the tenth is an x stitch nine with an, a line tenth is an x all the way down all the way across the bottom the other side so it completes the square then go all the way around complete the x's and then i didn't actually do the inner one then i then started to stitch the top and then as soon as i have um the top bit the flowers you know how mm -hmm. they go zigzag mm -hmm. Yes. Stitch that bit, then I have a marker to do the inner one because it's easier to count then for for the inner inner uh, border. So once I have the top line of flowers, I then put the inner border in exactly the same way as I did the outer one. There was this double border. This is kind of a little little trickier, would you say, than a, a typical yeah. sampler? No, it's fun. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it's fun until you get to that bottom right corner. <laughs> no, it it. If you count it correctly with the little X's that I do, the technique, it works out fine every time. Every every sampler I've done, I've never had a problem with it. Okay. So that's one of our hard, uh, that, that's a, a rock solid tip right there. Okay. <laughs> rock they solid, love it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you, you stitch on a scroll frame? I do. Yes. On a millennium frame, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then you did this one. This was done 40 counts, so you were doing one over two then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot of counting. Oh, yes. <laughs> a lot of counting. Lots of counting. Well, when I when I got my piece all, all ready to go, to go on the scroll frame, I was holding it up, and Margaret happened to walk by. Holy smoke, she says, that thing's gigantic. Yes, yes. <laughs> Where are we going to put I that? Have... I said, I don't know, but we're going to put it somewhere. <laughs> I, I had the same reaction here. It's like, that's where are you going to work on that? I said, anywhere I want. <laughs> <laughs> yep, she is rather large. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I think that's that drew me to her because it's the biggest one I've ever stitched. It's amazing. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Now, you, you've referred to it as quirky more than once. Uh, yeah. re really have to pay attention uh, to the positioning of every every element, right? Oh, definitely. I mean, there are a lot of mirroring um, motifs, but they're not the same. Um, they may look the same, but some of them are very different. Um, so, yeah, everything has to be checked and double-checked when you're stitching. Don't take it for granted. That, oh, it's the same motif, yeah. Definitely. I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah. yeah i learned that with that other sampler i'm working on i, I would just get going and say oh this oh, we're going to do this again and and then discover no we're not it was different yeah. yeah yeah so so you start left corner now did you finish the the entire double border before you went to work on the inside or do you get your border established and then just kind of do things as you as you want to I left the um, two borders empty. I didn't put the satin stitch in oh. um, till the, to the very last moment. Um, so I stitched everything else. I worked my way down, um, like I suppose in stages, as I rolled the, the scroll frame. Um, and then the very last moment, I put the satin stitch in. 
just on the border. The satin stitch in the middle of the design I stitched as we went, um, but the outside bit I put in last. And and why why one border and not both together? Well, the, no, both of the borders, um, like the tram lines I left, um, and the satin stitch I put in last because I didn't want to crush the stitches. So as I scrolled it, the satin stitch would have been literally crushed. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I left it. I wanted it look, you know, I wanted it to look perfect. So as I when I finished the whole inside, I then went right back to the start and literally started filling in the satin stitch and then scroll, rolled it along, filled in it down each side, rolled and then filled in the bottom bit. So it looked perfect without any, you know, like crushes in it. Yeah. Okay. Now this is, this is going to be a really nitpicking question here. When, when you did that, when you, uh, uh, scrolled it, were you, did you not have the linen as taut? As you were scrolling up with doing the satin stitch, were you did you try to keep it a little looser, or did you just go ahead and keep it as taut as you usually do, knowing that it wouldn't be the satin stitch wouldn't be in one place as long, if that makes no, any I, sense? It makes perfect sense. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, no, I left I left it as taut as I had originally stitched it, so it was still very tight, um, and then I put the satin stitch in, and all the stitches sat perfectly with the taut. Um, linen underneath so I left it really tight um, and then when I scrolled it obviously it stayed in the perfect place but it was only there for a short time that's why I left it to last oh, okay now a lot of people have I mean th this satin stitch border has, has raised a lot of questions it and, has you know that just uh, and I appreciate it because it's it's very different and were, were you and, and I've wondered this too and I haven't yet done it were you uh, taking one thread and and going uh, just one hole as you as you went across? If I, I don't know, I'm not sure. Oh, about... to fill the to put the satin stitch smooth. You mean right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, basically because because the linen was such a small count. Um, as long as you put your stitches very straight and uh, um, it literally filled in the gap. There was no gaps. So, yeah, it, it filled it in perfectly. There was no need to, like, double thread into one hole or the odd hole. It just sat perfectly with one okay. thread in each hole. Because yeah. I know that's what's bothered people was, was whether it would fill in. So it just, it just did. And then yeah. if, you're, if you're doing on 32 or 36 count and doing two threads, we should still have the same result. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It should yeah. fill really nicely, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. The um, oh, let's see here. I got a made them. Got a made them. <laughs> Was uh oh oh talk about uh the over one the words because that's always something that that challenges people. One, it takes a long time, but Tiny. what uh, what what tips would you offer for that? Tiny stitches, yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, that. Tiny <laughs> stitches, yeah. Um. Thank goodness for my, you know, for my uh, double eyes, as I call them. They're clip-on magnifiers, what I put onto my glasses. Thank goodness I have those. Um, yeah, the tiny stitches, wow. Well, um, well, I basically stitch each letter, and I don't cross the threads to the next word. Um, so each letter is stitched on the back. If you look, did you have a chance to look at the back of mine when you no. saw it? No, it was mounted on... Uh on um foam course so i didn't i couldn't look at the back of the back of it when i t when i stitch words um each letter is stitched individually so that there are no cross threads not even a glimpse of one to the next letter so because that's one of my pet hates that when you look at a sampler and for my sorry i should say a pet hate for me personally <laughs> um <laughs> but uh, not to offend anybody each to their own um but my personal pet hate is if you look at a sampler at the front and you can see the thread underneath linking mm -hmm. it to the next letter. So I try not to do that. So each letter is stitched individually. And then obviously the next the next word starts again for a new one. So, um, yeah, the tiny stitches, just take your time with them. That's all I can say. It's, it's Yeah, very time consuming. Now, do, do you, uh, for instance, do a word and then go do some other things and co then come back or... Do you pound your way through the, the words? No. When I start the words, the words get done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, 
I don't go back there. No, they, they get done once I start them. Yeah. And how, how are you anchoring your beginnings and ends of your threads then if you're doing each letter individually? Because that would probably be the most challenging part of it, I would imagine. Yeah. Especially over one. Yeah. Well, e each one I try to um, start with a pin stitch, which is really mm -hmm. difficult to, to hide the thread. So I try as best as I can to do that. And then um, on the back, I just tuck it under what I've stitched. Mm -hmm. So to make it as neat as possible. Um, and that that's basically what I try to do. Um, and it kind of works. I haven't had a problem with it yet. Yeah. So just pin stitch over one then. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And tuck it in at the back, yeah. Yeah. What would you say, if there's a real challenge in this one, where, where would you say it's at? Mm. Well, for me, oh, well, the challenge, well, the size of it, sticking with it, definitely. That's a challenge in itself. Um, but for sh the sheer, I can't go back to that word again, quirkiness um, is the motifs to in itself I mean they're beautiful but they are a challenge to make sure that they're in the right place um, to count the distance a lot of counting in between each one to make sure they're positioned correctly yeah that's I mean I think that's one of the great appeals of this is that there are so many little elements and you can have a, a feeling of accomplishment because you can complete them in a setting but there because there are so many yeah the, and, and they aren't positioned symmetrically really at all are they no no you, you think they would be you know you line it up on the border you start one side and you think oh i'll start it on the other side the same place no <laughs> no <laughs> nothing and nothing seems to be in relation to anything else you no. know consistently which which okay so you can look at that one of two ways you can look at that as that's going to be really difficult because each one has to be counted very particularly, very, you know, carefully and count it twice and make sure you do it, you know, perfectly well. Yeah. But the other way you can look at it is if you happen to mess up a little bit and you're off by one or two, no one is ever going to know because all of them are off by one or two intentionally because that's exactly. how the entire piece is done. So exactly. if you happen to misplace one or two motifs anywhere, no one will ever know the difference. No. Nope. And that's artistic Gary. nonsense. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Because you, I know, would not be able to tolerate that. Because you like, and, and I mean this with the greatest love and respect. <laughs> you, okay. you have such, such a, no, because you, you have such a, a high um, standard for what you stitch that if you found that there was a single stitch out, you would, you would redo it. Because you would you would want to to make it perfect, and I think that's where you and I would differ. Where in in this piece, if I happen to find that one bird was one stitch over or half a stitch over because it's one over you know one over two, I might be inclined to just kind of go <laughs> <laughs> and just kind of leave it, and you know because no one will ever know except me, and it, no one's ever going to examine it the way that that. Uh, Jacqueline's piece <laughs> is being examined. So, and even and I would argue that even her piece isn't being examined that way because no one's counting the stitches; they're counting the chart. So, I, I'm I'm of the mind that I would not. I would rather invest that time into getting the statin stitch perfect and getting the stitches perfect than getting the count perfect, right? Because no one's going to care about the count, but they are going to notice the the quality of the stitching. But th that's complete personal preference. Are you horrified? You are horrified, aren't you? Me? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jackie is, but I'm not. No. <laughs> no, I, I'm a perfectionist too. I like to have everything right. It's it, and I think it's different, right? If I was stitching for for a purpose, right? If I was stitching as a model stitcher, I would have a completely different, yeah. um, a different uh, way of going about doing it. Like you know, for my work. I operate in a 180 degree different way, right? The, my workspace is immaculate. The way I do things is perfect. There's, there's no room for error because it, that's the way that needs to be. Mm. In recreational 
stitching, I, I don't feel that same pressure. But if I was stitching professionally, if I was stitching a model or if I was stitching a class or if I was stitching anything, or even if I was taking a class, I would treat it differently and I would stitch for perfection because then my goal would be different, right? My goal would be how well can I stitch this piece? It would be about technique and it would be about reproducing the piece accurately and perfectly. And yeah. in this case, what, you know, the, I guess the argument that I'm making is that for all the people that are stitching this piece or any piece, if you're, if your goal is to enjoy yourself mm -hmm. um, and your goal is to make something that you find attractive, then being off by one, if it's not going to irritate you, then move on and, and, you know, Fine. go on with your piece. It, it really depends on what is what is important to you and why you stitch and why you stitch each piece. And I think it's different for each piece yeah. for each time. Right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I stitch for fun. I literally do. I love to stitch. Um, and that's why I stitch for Nicola for fun. Mm -hmm. So ev everything that I do, um, I have to have a fun element. So I love to stitch. That's why I stitch. If I didn't love it, then I wouldn't do it. Would I? Mm-hmm. Agreed on that. Hey, Jacqueline, take us through the, those two triangular pine trees that are down yeah. at the bottom. Yeah. Those, I think those are, are my, at this moment, have, not having stitched anything, two, my two favorite things when I look at it. There's three colors in that. How, how did you go about stitching those? Did you keep three threads active as you went from top to bottom? Or yeah. how did you go about that? Uh, stuck with one color first, so stitched all of one color, the darker color, and then um, the next color, and then the next color. Okay. I, I tend to do that on on items like that. I tend to do um, stick with one color because you know it's it's okay for the smaller things to you know chop and change the colors, but for a big thing like that, it was just as easy to do the whole thing and then change the color. Now, did you make? Uh... Uh, make your X's vertically then? I mean, going from top to bottom, or did you still stitch horizontally? I think I I start, I came up from the grass from the bottom, so I did the pot and then literally went straight up, whatever okay. that is. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah from, to, from bottom to top. Yeah, I, I, I asked that because that's one of the things I spend a lot of time on. I, I guess it's kind of a, a puzzle challenge for me on yeah. just everything is what path am I going to take with this particular element? Mm -hmm. And and how is it, you know, how is it going to use the thread and, and, or can I carry thread? And I, I, if, if you did that, then you, you really could just carry all the threads, right? Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, you think about real deep stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, I do. I <laughs> just... Um, I'm just in awe of what, you know, how, how, what depth you think of this. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, great question. <laughs> okay. There. there. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> great question. Yeah. So yeah, just, but you know, another person may start at the top and come downwards, you know, it's each to their own, isn't it? Whatever you feel comfortable with. Yeah. Gary, which way do you find is the best way to have the least amount of, uh, thread showing through on the other side through to the front like the carried threads that you're talking about oh, what's your I'd, favorite I'd, way i rarely carry threads i don't like carrying threads on really any of them uh, right so do you go horizontally do you like what's your preferred method well that's of... that's why i'm asking this question because right. most most of these i would stitch horizontally mm -hmm. but i look at this one and i start to map out the path and it seems to me like I'd want to make my vertical X's because I could see starting at, for instance, starting at the top of that tree and going down the left side mm -hmm. and then, and then skipping over and coming up, you know, zigzagging my way back to the top and doing that all the way across with the darkest color and then coming back and doing the same thing with the next color. Um, I mean, that seems to me the, the path, I think that's the path I would take. I, Jackie, what did you take? Which is probably unfair because it's been a while. You probably don't remember. <laughs> in quite a while. Um, let me think. I think I kept, 
I remember doing some kind of snake pattern, you know, like a, a wavy thing going on. I don't know how, I don't remember offhand what direction I went in, but I, I don't remember. I'm, um, hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. That's okay. No, <laughs> I, I don't remember. I, I just think I, that I just yeah. think that that these kinds of questions are are fun to ponder, and yeah. uh, you know just how would you tackle each element? Because because you you take for instance uh, if if we take that right hand tree, and then the crown that's to the left of it, to me I, that that would all get stitched horizontally. I'd start on the left side, work my way up, and then work way you know kind of work my way around. Um, but the tree, I think, just poses a different pattern. So, I think I think it's whatever you feel comfortable with. I mean, you obviously like making patterns and with your stitching as you go. So maybe you know that's what you know gives you the enjoyment as you stitch. Yeah. The more I look at this, the more it's going to be fun, just because <laughs> of that. Yeah. The um, the grass at at the base there where, where the heart is at. Yeah. Was that pretty straightforward? Uh, did yeah. you do a little free form with that? Or? Yeah, I mean, on the chart it was, you know, there, it it's just lines. So basically, just free, free stitch. I mean, it, it's quite simple to just put a line of, of thread in, um, and a bit like, uh, yeah, free form stitching. I think, you know, it looks like grass. Just stick it in there. Yeah, it looks like a looks like a place where you could just kind of, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Do what you like, yeah. Whatever feels good, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And then that's the other part that when I really started to study the chart, I didn't realize how much satin stitching there is in the flowers. Mm hmm They're really pretty. Yeah. yeah. And that also, you just did one, basically one thread into one and, yes. and everything covered well. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I stitched those as I went. Yeah, they they turned out really well, um, and the filled filled the uh, linen really well too with no gaps. Oh, this is going to be great! It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and you can see uh, Jackie's model. Uh, we've been talking about it. Um, I did the video with Jean Lee about the um, uh, showing the model where we videoed it up up close, so you can see. Uh, see Jackie's work and see how it all comes together and um, uh, so that you know that should be helpful I, I was pleased with the way that came out just because I think it can really help people as they work their way through all right we're going to run out of time what was what was the most fun part and don't tell me finishing <laughs> <laughs> no I was really sad actually when I finished her. oh because <laughs> um, <laughs> she was so lovely to work on um the most fun part for me was definitely the satin stitch borders. I loved them. Mm -hmm. I love satin stitch. Satin stitch, I could just stitch a whole sampler in it. It's lovely. Um, so for me, the, the borders were amazing to stitch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's definitely, I think, the show piece or the show showiest part of the whole thing. It, uh, mm -hmm. It's just because yeah. it's so unusual, too. They definitely make her complete, don't they? Yeah. Mm. They sure do. I know you can't say, but uh, you got another uh, Hands Across the Sea sampler on the rack there? I do. I do. Yeah, she's almost half complete at the moment. So she'll be no doubt released when I, as soon as I've finished her. <laughs> All right. Yeah. How, how many hours a day do you get in, roughly? Well, well it depends, really. Um, I'm actually um, on a break at the moment because I do full-time uni course. Um, so I'm studying at the moment. So I sometimes I stitch before I go to uni, um, when I come back from uni, or just at weekends. It depends how much uni work I've got to do. So um, I try and fit her in, you know, try stitching every day because that's what I like to do. It just makes my heart sing and makes me happy. Mm. So, so that's what I try and do. Does it give you, yeah. give you um, from your studies, gives you a nice mental break? Uh Kind of. <laughs> I'm, I'm studying um, textile design, so I do stitching. Oh. In too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I do lots of stitching. Yeah. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> it's I all just, fun. 
It I just imagine, you know, she's studying Russian literature and she gets to take a break from that. But, oh, no, she's studying textiles. Okay. <laughs> yep, textiles. Yeah. Excellent. All right, Jackie, we sure appreciate the time and, and the insights. And uh, obviously your, uh, your model is just gorgeous. And uh, here as we start this stitch along, um, uh, I know everybody, who, I've, I've just been drooling over the people who have already been stitching and those of us yeah. who are just getting started. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, maybe here in a couple, three months, we'll have you back. And when Christine and I have a little experience with it and we'll have questions. So, um I I'd just like to say thank you very much for having me on here. And um, to everybody that's stitching her, um, have fun and enjoy it and happy stitching. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jacqueline. And thanks to everybody for listening. And we will, uh, Sunday, Sunday's guest, Jessica Cheney of Lysette Designs, painted canvas needlepoint. Ooh, going to be fun there. Uh, so get going on Sarah Brazier and Sunday will be Jessica Cheney and Christine and I will be back next week. Thanks for listening. Take care.